Hi everybody, uh, this here picture of Angry Joe looking a bit angry sums it up. I've been doing something wrong for the last seven years and for some reason I have a strange urge, urge not to shove it under the carpet but actually tell you about it. So what have I been doing wrong? This is my uh, spreadsheet where I calculate all the aerodynamics of the, the models in, uh, in the simulator, uh, which is nice. So how did I go about making sure this was correct? There was some information about how the stuff worked with the diffuser and the wings and stuff. And I figured out a way to check this. So we have telemetry in the sim and telemetry can give you the tire loads. Now you know when the car is just sitting still in the pits with the weight distribution what the tire loads are just sitting still in the pits. And then for example I would do 100 miles an hour uh, with using a rev limiter or just uh, in, in second gear for example. And then at that speed I would look at the tire loads again and then the difference in the tire load was the arrow. At least so I thought. And doing that gave me results that I could reproduce here in my spreadsheet. So I knew exactly with my spreadsheet where the downforce was going to the front or to the back, how much. And it would match with my telemetry analysis. Great. Not uh, no slight teeny little, teeny tiny little error there. So what have I uh, done and what was wrong? First of all, I have not made this drawing. Uh, my talents are lacking in so many departments that uh, I wouldn't attempt that. However, I did improve this by adding a body kit. What I did, first of all, there's drag. So at a few places you can I imagine the air bumping into, into the car and that creates drag. And because of the body kit, we also get downforce a bit at the front, something here at the under tray and some at the back. Now, one way to do that, which I did, was to t calculate... There we are. I took this point, the rear axle here, at the tire uh, contact point, and the resultant force of the drag, there is a resultant force of the downforce and you can do a relatively simple sum of the moments, sum of the forces and, and not, not sum all of them but the sum, you know, added up. That's what you do there and you get the tire loads and this would match perfectly with what I got from my uh, telemetry analysis. So in this case the blue arrow, the drag, creates a moment a tipping back moment of the car because it, the drag applies above the point where I'm calculating from and that's a force times this distance so we get like a pitching back moment like it would do a wheelie if it was too extreme. How should you do this though is not calculate here on the bottom but on the center of gravity of the car which might be somewhere here typically could be a reasonable location. See the difference here? Now this drag arrow is in line with the center of gravity. So there is no moment. So there is no pitching back or pitching forward. So this is how you should do it. And as a reminder how I was doing it, the painful reminder. This uh, layer is named fail. So I was calculating it here at the bottom. And then this drag would be causing a back pitching moment. That's important. So, okay, if that's wrong, why was I getting correct results with telemetry? That makes no sense. Well, I kind of forgot about a little thing. See, we have drag. That's cool. Uh, let's uh, get rid of these for a bit. And let's also get rid of these for a bit. But that's cool, but if this is the force applying, uh, pushing against the car, but we are doing a steady speed, something else must be, must be pushing the car into the wind, so to speak. And that's that one. Assuming rear wheel drive, but it doesn't really matter. This arrow here is the force from the tires pushing the car forward, driving the car forward. And in reality, if we apply all the forces around the center of gravity, See what this does, it's a force acting at a distance, this causes a back pitching moment. So I was doing it wrong, I forgot this one, 
And in my case, the drag was uh, causing a back pitching moment. So the net result is pretty much identical as long as my center of uh, here, my center of drag was about the same place as the center of gravity, which is typically the case. And in that case, it was uh, the case that my uh, forgetting of this driving force at the back was equal to the error that I made from calculating not on the center of gravity, but here. See, the, the moment here, the pitching back from the drag, is the same as the pitching back. Hang on, hang on, I can explain this. I've already done too much failing. So here the blue arrow has a distance where it applies, causing a pitching back moment. So this is what I was doing. This was pitching back. But now imagine doing it properly, looking at the center of gravity instead of there, and adding the driving force. Now this is exactly the same. This causes a back pitching moment as well. So the results are the same. Incorrect checking of telemetry and incorrect calculation. So this led me to the conclusion that I was doing it right, but I wasn't. Uh, now I'm confused again as well, but the answer is is there. What does this mean in practice? Okay, so I was fairly annoyed, slightly frustrated um, for a long time now. For uh, I always had too much oversteer at high speeds uh, than what I would sort of expect. And having this spreadsheet, I'm not just going to enter numbers until it feels right. There's typically some data on the cars and there is a certain front rear arrow downforce distribution and I don't want to deviate from that too much. Uh, so if this says 40% and that's real and then the car is undrivable, a mistake must be made elsewhere. The effect is though, doing it wrong, as I did, uh, my downforce prediction is wrong. So I wouldn't get here 44% downforce, I would get 47% percent for example so my arrow was always more biased towards the front more downforce on the front and uh, for example the, the worst example was the super truck uh, where the downforce isn't there but it's got a lot of drag and my error is in the drag and it's got a lot of drag applying a long way off the ground so this arrow is large and this red dot here and it's a long way off the ground so I would calculate quite a significant back pitching for the drag because I was doing it wrong as we will still know. See I was calculating it here. So the higher you apply this drag, and in the case of the stadium uh, super truck, the drag is applied quite high, the more back pitching it would do. So the more I would think the front lifts up and the rear gets downforce. So I would compensate by adding some downforce on the front which would neutralize it again. So I thought, but it doesn't. So on some cars, the higher the center of gravity and, and the center of the drag was, and the less downforce it had, the bigger this effect. So I have now got to rewrite my aerodynamics spreadsheet, so it's all in, in shambles, doing it properly this time. And that should hopefully make uh, the cars handle better at high speed. Although, uh, that having said that, we always adjust and tweak a little and Renato does his uh, share of uh, adjustments and in this case probably uh, for the better. Uh, but yeah, it's a victory for, let's say, the scientific method of not just entering something until it might work, but entering something that you calculated and checked. And then that's the thing with, with attempting to do it somewhat scientifically. Uh, sometimes you figure out that you did something wrong and that's only going to improve things because getting getting it wrong means you you've got information based on which you probably are a bit less wrong which is always better than being more wrong so yeah uh, I've got my work cut out for me for the next days uh, redoing all the arrow uh, stuff uh, more properly and uh, hopefully that will improve uh, all the cars quite a bit some are some rough tests already main meant a lot uh, high-speed stuff in the f in the super truck and also in the boxer uh, cup 
uh, S's, fast S's, where it would sort of go into oversteer at the second or third. Just from too much front downforce, it was now quite stable. So extremely uh, hopeful that this will make, this is the missing link, uh, that weird oversteer I felt I was getting with no reason, because the arrow I was getting here seemed to be correct, but in practice it was too, mar too much at the front. So, rambling video, uh, yeah, disappointed in a way, seven years of doing this somewhat wrong, but also good to know that I was wrong, so we can do better from now on. Uh, yeah, that's uh, what you get. So, um, let's, uh, let's get to work. Doing better, less wrong rules. <laughs>